Step into the ring, it's time to rock the night. Sergeant Slaughter's here, ready for the fight. Million dollar man, with his gold and his flair. We've been through it all, we've gone everywhere. Wrestle Rock, where legends collide. With no sort of band and Johnny by our side. Tomahawk chops, I'm rowing drops. We're the podcast that never stops. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, you're watching uh, the season six of the Wrestle Rock podcast. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Johnny D, and I'm hosting this episode with my partner, Benoit, aka Nostradamus. Ben, how's it going today, my friend? Uh, oh, fine, and you? Yes, I'm doing super great. And just before um, uh, you have announce our answer. yes, uh, <laughs> to announce our guest. Uh, we have uh, an important thing. So um, on uh, Sunday, August fourth, don't forget everyone. LWA Live Wrestling Auction in collaboration with Mister uh, Jeff Leduc. Uh, uh, LWA will uh, organize a super signing in virtual with uh, the the legendary Paul LeDuc and his son, Carl LeDuc. Uh, do you remember the, uh, yeah, the, the LeDuc the, brothers? The, the yes, 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 yes. Escaping yes. brother, Joe LeDuc. Yes, exactly. But tonight we have another, none other than a uh, w, uh, WE uh, talents, WCW, of course. The former uh, WE, WWE uh, tag team uh, champion. Yes, uh, Two times WWE uh, champion with his partner, uh, Phineas. I'm talking about uh, Enrio Godwin. How's you going today? Uh... Ooh-wee. Glad to see you, boys. <laughs> hey, that's awesome that you accept our invitation. Uh, that's very cool. And I think that we learned a lot of interesting stuff about Mr. Godwin. And uh, we're going forward with the first, the first question. So go in, my friend. Uh, okay, uh, no problem. Yes. Okay, Mr. Godwin, you practiced amateur wrestling in college. How was your transition from amateur wrestling to pro wrestling? No, just in high school. I wrestled in high school. Okay. Um, placed uh, 10th in the state of Virginia my junior year. Okay. And then moved, moved to West Virginia. And the school, we were so far back in the hills. Didn't even know what wrestling was. They didn't have a wrestling team here. So uh, the transition was a little different because it's totally different. Two, okay. two different things. Uh I was very shy and uh, in school growing up. So uh, transitioning to being in front of 20,000 people or 50,000 people was was uh, a little hard. Of course, uh, starting out with George South and Italian mm -hmm. State, <clears throat> of course, that sort of, sort of broke the ice for me. So I learned there and I was much prepared when I got to WCW my first uh, stint there okay okay oh that's interesting so it, um if i understand what you're saying you started your wrestling career in wcw before the wwf right right yeah dusty uh dusty Rhodes and cowboy bill watts give me my first okay. job uh okay. i had a, eric watts had just graduated from the university of louisville so okay he's uh and my i think our his first tv match was me okay or first and uh they like dusty and cowboy like my size and the way i worked with eric because he was green then and mm -hmm. uh, you know i'd only had like two and a half three years experience myself but we had a hell of a tv match and they asked me that night uh come up and ask me if I could work with Eric some some on the road and I said I was like damn really hell yeah <laughs> this country boy twice and, <laughs> and I said you know when when are you talking about when can we do it and they said well can you go tonight <laughs> <laughs> awesome. so that was what I wore down to TV and my gear so Arn Anderson and George South and Italian Stallion are giving me clothes because I'm going to be gone five days. 
So I went oh. on to Gary Stitless and uh, started riding with Ar rode with Arn Anderson. He he was by himself, and he said, "I'll take you to the next town." So I rode with him. Okay. Uh, and then ended up in the car with Harley Race driving, me and Barbarian in the back seat, and oh. and Des in the front seat. The car was overweight, if you know what I mean, my friend. <laughs> many, many talents uh, in the car. Yes, many, many talents and uh, super heavyweight. <laughs> yeah, because there's like a hundred years of knowledge in the damn vehicle. Yeah, of course. Totally, totally, totally. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but right there in that car with them. I learned so much. and uh, Probably, man, with the best. Guy. Spent the night at... Uh, barbarian's house and his wife cooked for us and i was always close with harley when i uh when i left matter of fact when i left wcw when me and hunter and phineas got let go mm -hmm. in 94 harley called the office uh vince and jj Dillon and him and kevin nash and put a good word in for me and in three weeks i had a uh Rode up, talked to Vince and J.J. Dillon for three hours, and that's where <laughs> Godwin was born. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Go ahead. Okay, uh, yes. no problem. You did a short run in WCW uh, as the Shanghai, the Shanghai Pierce. How did you get recruited by uh, that company? Uh, well, you know, uh, I was going and being an extra doing TVs. Uh, okay. You know, like I said, I had that match with Eric, and mm -hmm. that got me that got me my start. So, uh, how the gimmick got started with Tex in Shanghai? Mm -hmm. uh, Dusty loved old westerns, and he was okay. watching. Um, he loved the gunfight at OK Corral. <laughs> okay, okay. So there's okay. two there's two guys in there. One's name is uh, Shanghai Pierce. He's okay. a, a a cattle guy and Tex Lazinger, they're like these Texas evil men, I guess. But, uh, okay. yeah. And, uh, that's, they brought Dennis up and he had a TV match and, uh, they put us together and, uh, they put me under math story. Likes that story. Uh, Dusty yeah. said, uh, Mark, you got too much of a baby face. We're going to put a mask on you. But he said, Tex is ugly enough, so he don't need a mask. <laughs> <laughs> and about the WCW, can you tell us about your match against Johnny B. Bad? I'm talking about... Uh, the night they took Yes. Uh, in WCW, uh, you lost your shine guest Pierce mask to him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We went to TV that night, and... Uh, they said, hey, we're going to take your mask off of you, which was a little weird because I felt comfortable in my mask. You know, it, it, was, it was the chinless, you know, so your mouth yeah. is open. You could breathe better. And I had been wrestling a year and a half with it. So I was used to it. It was like part of me. Mm -hmm. That was difficult giving the mask up because uh, probably. I just felt like a, a, a different person under the mask. Like I felt mm -hmm. like I could do anything. Yeah. But then when the mask come off, it sort of changed. I mean, we got used to it, but uh, it just, it was a little difficult at first. Yeah. Okay. And Mr. Godwin, uh, were you and Dennis uh, worried that your former gimmicks wouldn't be popular with the crowd because there were already gimmicks like a Hillbilly Jim, Uncle Elmer and more? I just thought we weren't, I don't know, like redneck slash hillbilly. Yeah. We weren't just stupid hillbillies that danced around, you know. Uh, and we were a little more athletic than uh, <laughs> Uncle Elmer and <laughs> you know, even Hillbilly Jim. We did a lot. We did. We were, I mean, you go back and look at some of our matches in WCW. And that was one thing Arn Anderson told us down there. He goes, man, you guys can move and you're too good at getting other people over. And he was the one that actually, he was the first one that actually said, you guys should think about going up north. So, you know, we've known Arn 30 some years and he's always been a part of our, uh, 
our little circle and he's given us good advice over the years. So I've always cherished that friendship with him. Okay. And how did you, uh, your transitions to becoming the, the Godwin go and who came up with the idea? Uh, well, I, when I met with Vince and JJ, they <clears throat> asked me, you know, what I did over the years job wise. And I said, well, uh, drove a tractor trailer. I worked uh, in a hospital for years. And uh, I said, we farmed, you know, my, my okay. grandparents on both sides were farmers and okay. contractors. So that uh, that's, uh, it was You're easy. For me. Okay, so okay. Vince goes, ah, what Vince goes, uh, what about the, what about the farm and what'd you have on your farm? So that was the, Only that was really the only thing he asked me about out of my all of the jobs I've had, and he because he's a country boy too, you know, Carolina, and uh, he said, you know, what'd you do on the farm? And I said, well, we had what'd you have? And I said, we had hogs and chickens and cows, we a couple horses. <laughs> and he goes, well, what what about the hogs? What'd you do with them? I said, well, we we had seventy six head at one time, me and my dad. And uh, we just raised them and sold them and butchered one every year for ourselves, one or two, and, uh, you know, slopped them and castrated them, the ones that had to be. So when I said the latter part of all that, when I was describing it with the slop and, the, you know, just at dinner time, you uh, throw in the bucket. When it gets full, you take it down, slop the hogs. So. <laughs> and by the end of the day, he, he definitely wanted the uh, slop bucket involved. And uh, that was so I mean, fun with the bucket. <laughs> that was the, that was that was uh, the trademark, man. Yeah, that was a, that was a ten more, of course. And um, go ahead, go can ahead. I do a, a word game just before? Go ahead. <laughs> On Gogan. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, did no. you? Uh, we remember that you um, won uh, your first title against uh, the Body Donners. So, did you enjoy your feud against the Body Donners when you won your first WWE Tag Team Championship? That was really special, the first one, because it was in Madison Square Garden. Ah, uh, where the yeah, fire I remember was. that. The fire marshal was raising hell because it was so overpacked, mm -hmm. and uh, so that was that was a really fun night, and uh, that's probably one of that and the hog pen match are two of my favorite matches. And uh, wow, yeah, it was just an exciting time. Okay, Mr. Godwin, can you tell us? Uh... A funny story about Tamalin Sitch, aka Sonny, uh, that nobody knows. Uh, well, I'd say a lot <laughs> of people know this. Some of your listeners may not know this. I just did this with uh, Shane Douglas uh, pod, uh, an interview, and then I did uh, the guy from England. I did his okay. a couple weeks ago, but this was talked about. Yeah, the funny, funny story with Tammy was Sonny. It, ha it has to be the slop story. I'm sure you guys. Yeah, of course. Of course. That's an important uh, player for your gimmick, if you know what I mean. So, was yeah. your manager? Yeah, she was so, your manager, of course. Your valet, your manager. Yes. Uh, so, that should we fun. go? With, should, we, should we tell that story? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay, well, we got to TV one day and uh, uh, they said, hey, uh, I think Bruce Pritchard said, hey, you guys are going to slop Sunny tonight. I was like, oh, hell yeah, because I've got good at making slop, you know. <laughs> Try to use the same recipe, the consistency, something that's going to stick to somebody's head and face and all. So uh, I went and, and we seen Vince and I asked him, I said, so we're really slopping sunny. It's cool. And he said, yeah, we're going to do that tonight. So uh, I went, we went and ate at the uh, catering and I made the slop just like bread, lettuce, Sometimes some pasta and some ranch dressing. Just something that's going <laughs> to look good. Look like real slop. Everything and, uh, you can find. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was a clean slop when I made it. 
and I, you know, we went and got ready and I took, I carried it with me. So nobody had mess with it. But I, <laughs> I went in the locker room and I told everybody, I said, I don't, nobody mess with this because Sonny's getting slopped tonight. So I went out, we were going over the match and uh, production and everything. And I always filled my bucket about half full. Well, when I came back, it was about an inch or two from the top. So I knew somebody had messed with it and then come to find out even, even Cornette was on the vice channel on one of the shows. I think he said there was 23 different DNAs in that bucket. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah. so uh, I know razor and x -Pac contributed. They, they had to, uh, take a number one. So they took it in a stall and, uh, filled it up pretty good. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> That's a good story. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, after your, uh, your injury uh, from the doomsday device against uh, Legion of doom, uh, did you think your career was finished? Uh, no, I'm, I was being a dumbass and, uh, I was supposed to take 14 weeks off and have another MRI because I had had one uh, in Binghamton, New York, where I broke my neck. Okay. They said I had cracked my C7. Oh, and, uh, well, yeah, I remember that. Vince yeah. and Pat Patterson and I think mm -hmm. Briscoe come over to the hospital to check on me after TV. And okay. uh, I flew home the next day. But, uh, yeah, I had a cracked C7 and... I was supposed God. to, you know, take uh, three and a half months off and have another MRI, and then, but I went six and a half weeks. I had called Vince and told him I wanted to come back. You know, I was feeling okay, which was a wow. lie. Uh, you are yeah, courageous I, because I know what what it is. Because me and my partner Benoit was a um, former uh, indie wrestling, and I remember in 2000. Tree, I uh, I land on my leg, uh, on my neck uh, during uh, uh, a top rope shooting star press, and you missed it. God, and I missed it, and God damn, it was so horrible when you yeah. bump directly on your neck because uh, the head is the important uh, part of your body because if you broke your arm, your legs, or anything, when you when you have uh, two uh, members, you can move with the other one, but that's not yeah. the case with the head. So uh, that's very the important. Next central, <laughs> yeah, next yeah. central to everything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, okay, you uh, have a, a little question about about uh, the the, the oh, bra for all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. We want to know your uh, opinion about uh, the 1998 Brawl for All boxing tournament you took. You took part in. Yeah, I didn't want to because I just had sir. I just had sinus surgery done. Yeah. So I told the office. I said, Yeah, I don't really want to do it. And uh, of course, they talked me into it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I I thought it was bad. I mean. Uh, Vince Russo's uh, an asshole for wanting to push it the way he did. He just oh, had a, a horrible, vendetta horrible. against uh, Bradshaw. He, and, uh, you know, I think it was bad for the business and it was bad for the boys because a lot of people were hurt. You know, it messed with people's careers. Yeah, of course, of course. We discuss about about the, the 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 this situation with a Godfather a few months ago yeah. and he had the same uh, opinion. opinion because... It was the worst yeah, storyline. You, you can the, merge. The you can merge uh, professional wrestling with uh, boxing or MMA. That's uh, very. Uh, that's very different. The preparation is very different, and uh, we we can see that the 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 the, um, the danger is is always there for every discipline. If you know what I mean, but. Uh, yeah. If you don't have a, 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 a good preparation, a good background, uh, that that could be a, stop your uh, your wrestling career forever, and yeah. uh, that's the totally uh, bad uh, bad. Uh, Everybody knows the results. Uh, 
at uh, WrestleMania 15 when uh, Bart Gunn faced uh, Butter Bean. Yeah, that was yeah, that, yeah, that, that was that's very uh, the, and that's very that's probably uh end the career of Bart Gunn. Yeah, the after, reason why uh, uh, Bart yes, Gunn did it was uh, between uh, you and uh, and us uh, Butter Bean as a boxing skill uh, super heavyweight. Yes, and that's what totally different of professional wrestling. Yeah. And then Butterbean was in good shape then, so yeah. But but now a bar fight, any of them guys that was in the brawl for it all, a bar fight, I would have trusted any of them. They could have had my back, and I would have had theirs. But going out there and try to technically box is oh. wasn't our style. Now, if you want to go a bar fight, where it's on, <laughs> and I would I I trust all them guys in a bar fight, but. Yeah, it was it was a bad choice and it was idiotic. Yeah, and uh, uh, we are now on our pre-closing segment. So uh, first of all, thank you uh, for your generous time. It was uh, fantastic. Yeah, uh, we'll give you a name and you tell us something about them in a few words. Okay, so the first okay. one is L. Billy Jim. Oh. A southern boy, comical, a true <laughs> hillbilly, a big kid, and lovable. <laughs> awesome. The second one and is a, the Phenom, The Undertaker. Uh, a lot of the same. A big kid, <laughs> funny, quiet, though. Oh, um, okay. Interesting. Very loyal, good friend give the shirt off his back wow the third one uh, jeff jarrett jeff jarrett <laughs> oh double ditty is what we called it <laughs> had a lot of good times with jeff on the road me and uh me and phineas stayed in memphis with him and his first wife jill we called her jilly jam okay uh, she, she she passed away you know uh, she oh, had so sad But uh, she was a sweetheart, and Jeff was another one. That he he could be like a grumpy old man and <laughs> serious, but I've seen him at his worst, and I've seen him laugh and carry on. And but uh, you know, smart in the business too. And I remember he was uh, very near to Owen Hart. And I remember that Owen Hart in backstage was a very uh, funny person. He loved to uh, uh, make some, to, to make some David jokes Boy with Rivers. Him and yeah. David Boy, everybody. I've seen some uh, just silly stuff they did. Like uh, we were in the uh, Boston Gardens wrestling. Okay. And uh, the people that work the event. The event people, they had red red coats on at that event. They were little windbreakers. Well, Owen goes and gets a big can of shaving cream. <laughs> so after about 30 minutes of him and Davey being out there around everybody, everybody who had a damn red coat on that said event that <laughs> <laughs> have white all over their back and shoulder. Oh, awesome. um, just and I always tell this we were <clears throat> we did like nine towns in Canada at one time. Wow. Like little wow. like Red Deer and then we were in Calgary and mm -hmm. just all over in some little places too. And uh we wrestled them in a little hockey rink one night i forget where, where it was there was about eight thousand people there but it was it was just a b show so it was just filling in okay but can't they they had the belts at the time and uh him and davy come to the ring owen had a banana stuffed in his trunks <laughs> <laughs> had a mouthful of water and spit <laughs> in this about two or three minutes. I mean, he worked for a minute or two. And then when they locked up, he spit water in Phineas's face. Wow. <laughs> then, <laughs> messing around, he, he took the banana out of his trunks and peeled it and ate it. So <laughs> just, <laughs> just like, like, he was an idiot. 
and I, 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 to be, I miss them too so bad. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a, a very uh, bad situation. And the last one, Henry Godwin, yourself, my friend. Oh, my God. How you can say that, Bob? A big kid. <laughs> a big kid. Everybody. Uh, love to have fun. Play jokes. Hang with the boys, you know, the BSK. And uh, that was a big thing back then. And uh, I hope everybody's pleased with what I did or tried to do in the ring. And uh, God bless. That's all. God bless you, my friend. It was an honor uh, and privilege uh, for your uh, practically 30 minutes of your generous time. So we are now on our um, closing segment. My partner, Benoit, a.k.a. Nostradamus Ben. It's all about the French prophet. In, in, in... Yeah. He tried to predict the future of our guests. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go my head. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. First of all, Mr. Godwin, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, the, this interview. It was uh, amazing, huge, uh, fantastic. My prediction is uh, you and uh, your longtime partner, uh, Phineas, uh, you are going to be uh, inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame by uh, another Hall of Famer, uh, Hillbilly Jim. That would be awesome. That would I really for be you, awesome. Yes, that we, would be great. We cro we're crossing our that finger would, for that. Yeah, that would be the icing on the cake. Uh, or even if the whole BSK that's already inducted would induct us, would be cool. But if it doesn't oh, yeah. happen, man, I'm, I'm uh, grateful for what I accomplished. Yeah. And uh, me and my partner, Phineas, and Tex, and... You know, uh, yeah, I'm I'm pleased with what we did. I would be if I don't if we don't get in it, it's fine. You know, we've uh, we've been blessed in this business. Thank you for what we did. Honestly, it was a pleasure uh, to talk with you during uh, this interview, and I hope uh, one time we can shake your hand face to face. That will be fantastic. So uh, thank you so much. You're watching uh, the Wrestle Rock podcast, season yeah. six. We were with the Where fantastic. Are you guys at? Yes, we are located in Quebec City, Canada, two at hours from Montreal. three hours of Montreal. So that's why we have okay. a big accent, and sometimes we search our words. <laughs> well, I we got, do our I best every friend. day. Oh, I got a good friend that, that's in Montreal. He's been wanting me to come up there. So uh, his name's Mike Leslie. He's a good good guy. He was on the road Mike with Leslie. us a lot. Okay, okay. So we say hi to Mike if he um, hi, if you watch our uh, interview. So uh, Mike Leslie, hi. Thank you so yeah. much uh, for your time. It was fantastic, my friend. Goodbye. Thank you.